parents and the children could have fun together. Please board quickly and safely. Our monorail will be departing momentarily. Welcome to the My DVC Points podcast. Join the conversation as DVC members share their stories, personal preferences, and magical memories. Your reservation is confirmed. Your fast passes are booked. Pull up on the yellow strap because our journey into the magic of membership is about to begin. To infinity and beyond. Now, here's your host and curator of magical stories, Chad Pennycuff. Welcome home, neighbors, to episode 281 of the My DVC Points podcast. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at DVCRentalStore.com. If you've got some extra points and you'd like to put some cash in your pocket, or if you'd like to take those points and exchange them, yes, I know it's easy to call up DVC Direct and member services if you have blue card points and come back in and do a quick and easy exchange for that. According to my calculations, you're going to get about $9.15 a point that you give them back. $9.15 a point is the average cost of the dues across all resorts throughout 2024. However, if you come back in and you swap those points out over at DVC Rental Store for that cruise that you want to take, the Adventures by Disney, or even something totally non-Disney related, they are full-service travel agents over there at Be Our Guest Vacations, and they can swap your points for anything travel-related under the sun that you want to come up with. And they're going to give you at least $14 a point up to $18 a point. That $14 a point is 53% more than what Disney Direct pays you. And at $18 a point, you're getting 97%, almost 100% more bang for your buck by doing a swap and trade through them. DVCRentalStore.com. Let them know you heard about them here on the My DVC Points podcast. In today's episode, we've got something really special for you and unique. I am going to give you my hot take on the cabins at Fort Wilderness and five reasons why I'm not buying them. Actually, it's a little bit more than five, but some of them are kind of sub points in here. The other thing I'm going to tell you as well is this is content that is coming from a Disney Vacation Club analyst and super fan. I have bought and sold thousands of points over my seven, eight years of ownership. I currently own points at the Polynesian Copper Creek Cabins and Villas and over at the Villas at Disneyland Hotel. I have the top annual pass on both coasts, so I don't have to deal with as many blackout dates. I am a super fan of Disney. I love this company. I love this product. And it pains me to come back in and share the information that I'm going to share with you today. This, this content really belongs behind a paywall because it is so raw and unfiltered. My friends, I am not a real estate agent. I am not a licensed financial services professional in any sort of fashion. I'm a Disney super fan. And what you're getting is a Disney super fan content. So here is five reasons why I'm not buying the cabins at Fort Wilderness. Number one is the DVC restrictions. These are not new. They've been around since Riviera. But when you're done with your membership, because life happens, death, divorce, disability, or despite all the money that Disney throws at their marketing, vacations you'll never outgrow, that's a load of hooey. Your kids will outgrow this. Your kids will get to the point where they don't want to come to Disney and life changes. And when that happens, DVC has historically been the only timeshare on the planet that you could resell for what you paid or more money after you've used it for all of these years. The product was so strong that they fundamentally came back in and broke their product with these restrictions. And now when you get ready to sell that, whoever buys your contract is only going to be able to stay at the Fort Wilderness cabins, caveat under the circumstances that we know today. Theoretically, they could change that. We'll talk about that a little bit later on in the episode. But the reality of it is there's a 50% chance that you're a seller within eight to 10 years. That's what the statistics show us from the companies that finance contracts. The average person holds it eight to 10 years. And that's timeshare industry wide. DVC hasn't proven to be very much different from that. You've got some long haulers in there. You've got some people that sell shorter. The average is eight to 10 years. So if 50% are out, what's your chances? I, I can't tell you that. 
I can just go by the statistics. For me, it lets me know at some point in time, I may be done with this, and it's time to move on to the next chapter in life. Now, here's the thing. I bought Disneyland Tower, and I don't mind the restrictions there. In Disneyland, they can't drain another swamp and put up another timeshare. They don't have 47,000 acres of land where they can shoehorn in another resort. They are landlocked there. They've recently come forward with a proposal there that they're going to turn the existing Disneyland hotel parking lot into theme park, which means our timeshare there is going to be smack dab in the middle of a theme park. How awesome is that? Going to make parking a little bit more of a challenge, but let's be honest, here these days, I'm usually flying into John Wayne or Long Beach Airport and taking about a 20, 25 minute Uber ride to Disneyland and just staying on property and hanging out the whole time because I love the bubble that much. And you can definitely do that there at the Disneyland Hotel. So I don't mind the resale restrictions there because we can also look at the resale of Grand Cal and go, there's huge demand, very low supply. Nobody buys Grand Cal to network those points at another resort. You buy them to stay there. So I'm very confident that whoever buys my Disneyland hotel points will want to stay at Disneyland Hotel, and there'll be reasons to to, to do that because it's going to be harder to book there. So I think our investments are a little protected there. Here, whoever buys this is only going to be able to stay in one of 300-plus awkwardly configured cabins. I say awkwardly configured because they took away the door from the master bedroom out to the porch. And now your master bedroom has bunk beds inside the master. You've heard me say on this show a million and one times that DVC doors are a beautiful thing. Well, now the door has got the kids in the same room there. And that just doesn't really add up to me for multiple levels. There's one bathroom for up to six people there. It's just an awkward configuration in my mind. And whoever buys this from me resale is only staying at the cabins. Now, there are some super fans for the cabins out there. I don't know that there's enough super fans to fill it 365 days a year at 98% occupancy, which is what DVC normally runs. That's the reason why Disney is converting all of these older properties into DVC is because they're prepaid contracts that run at about a 98 to 99% occupancy. If you're in the hotel industry, that's awesome. That's like guaranteed money coming in. That's guaranteed people that are staying in your resorts, eating at your restaurants, and going to your theme parks. DVC is the hidden cash cow of Walt Disney World and Anaheim. So moving on to number two here. So number 2B, which is kind of side noting off of this limited room choice, if I own this contract at the 11 month window, I've got one single booking category. I got one arrow in my quiver that I can book at 11 months. Now compare this to like Riviera and the new villas at Disneyland Hotel. You got the two people rooms, you got the traditional studios, the one bedrooms, the two bedrooms, the grand villas. You've got a wide variety and gamut that works there. And in both of these resorts, they got the inventory really right. There's a lot more studios and duo studios over at Disneyland Hotel. And there's even more studios in Riviera than there are just traditional lock-off units. They put some dedicated ones in there so that their room inventory, the supply meets the demand of members who want more studios, because that's who's buying DVC as studio buyers at first. And then we eventually like make our ways up into the one bedrooms as a natural progression is from what I can tell. But if you own Fort Wilderness at 11 months, you're only booking cabins. And your resale buyer is really only booking cabins. That's it. M- moving on here to this like 2C, I'm telling you I'm not buying it, and I'm not buying it because if I ever decide that I want a cabin, I've got 300 plus cabins that are available to waitlist, and they're all in a single booking category. That means when I go on the waitlist for the cabins, I have 300 plus chances. That is the largest room inventory in all of DVC right now to go on a waitlist for. So your chances of waitlisting this If you've got direct points that can go there, are pretty good. 
So if I can waitlist it with pretty good chances of getting what I want, just simply due to the, the numbers game of how the waitlist works, why would I want to buy there? Number three reason for not buying this involves this new Palmetto Trust. And my beef here is that DVC has not been forthcoming with all of the details. I've sat down with my guide in person. I need the official answer here. I mean, how are you guys explaining this? Tell me everything you can. And his answer essentially boiled down to, I don't want to quote because I'm, I'm paraphrasing my understanding of it, which may or may not be right, but the essence of this was, is we built this Palmetto Trust so that we can have more flexibility and booking options for members going forward. Okay, you're going to change the rules. How are you going to change the rules? As an educated and informed consumer, I want to know what it is that I'm buying. And if this wild card is out here, I don't know if you're going to change them so that they're awesome or change them to my not-so-awesomeness. Are you going to take the next resort and make it so that they can 11-month book this as well? But yet, me over here, I'm stuck with the dues? I I'm not really keen to that. I, I need to know how it works before I buy in. With this uncertainty and unclarity here, I'm out. And I really think you take this today's episode and really consider whether you're in or you're out. We'll be friends either way. And by the way, if you have bought in and you do have a magical perspective on this resort, I really truly want to talk to you. Shoot me a note at mydvcpoints at gmail.com. Let's do a fair interview with you and I'll kind of bite my tongue and I'm going to try to come back in and capture the magic in your eyes so that we can share that with the rest of the DVC community. Because I built a pretty successful podcast here with authenticity and also sharing magic from multiple members' perspectives. We don't have to agree on any of this. If you're a Disney fan, I'm sure there's something in DVC that you'll love. If there's not, don't buy in. However, this is a pretty magical product and it's pretty diverse. With converting the Fort Wilderness cabins to DVC, they're really kicking the diverseness up a notch or two. I, I really have to say that. Not quite so comfortable in my eyes, because now we're clearly into the moderate land. And it always used to be a deluxe product. So let's see if that comes in and, and makes any implications or, or manifests itself in positive or negative ways going forward. We don't know. The number four reason, and this is probably the biggest beef that I have with this resort is based on what I know from doing financial analysis of the dues, the budgets, getting into all of them, and, and having done this, and then even talking with some even geekier, nerdier financial analyst people than me, because of the podcast, I get to meet them. And, and when I send them an email or reach out, they tend to respond to me. There's some really, 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 really bright nerds over at dvcnews.com, you've got Chris and Will and a guy named I Love Riviera over there that are just doing some phenomenal analytics work over there. But from talking with these guys and diving into the budgets, there are so many red flags in this resort that the dues are going to be insanely high. Let's just start off with the first one, individual buildings, 300 plus individual cabins that you have to heat, cool, paint, and maintain. There's an efficiency that comes with Bay Lake Tower that comes with Grand Flow. There's an efficiency that comes with all of the buildings all together at Poly or the new Poly Tower. From a heating cooling perspective, which we have to do an awful lot of cooling here in Florida most of the year, there's an efficiency of all these buildings being next to each other and attaching them. With 300 individual buildings, you lose that efficiency. The other big efficiency loss here, and it's probably even more so than the utilities, is the labor expenses that we have to pay mousekeeping to travel from building to building. And then we have to pay them to haul their supplies, the clean towels from building to buildings. The more time it takes and energy that it takes to haul all the dirty towels back out of the resort to get over to the laundry facility, all of those individual buildings have individual travel time. If these are all one bedroom resorts, somebody that's in mousekeeping will not be able to clean as many resorts in a given work day due to all of this travel time, which means our labor costs are going to be higher. 
Now keep in mind, I'm a huge fan of paying mousekeeping a living wage. Yeah, I support them so much, I'm considered one of their top fans on some of their union pages here on Facebook. When I tell you I support mousekeeping, I 100% do it. If you're going to raise our dues because it's going so that these guys can make a livable wage and be able to afford to live within a reasonable distance of Walt Disney World, which I know exactly what it costs to live near here, it's insane, I'm all in. So I'm not complaining about what we have to pay mousekeeping. I'm complaining about the additional time that it's going to take and the additional labor costs due to the drawn out nature of this resort. Things are so spread out, it's going to cost more. It's going to cost more to paint it, cool it, maintain it, all of that stuff. The other part to this is things that we know drive up dues are transportation costs. You've got boats here that come back in and service it. You've got three full-time boats that do nothing but run from the front of the resort to the back of the resort and and snake through all of the various different campground places all day long. Somebody's got to pay for all of that, and that somebody is the DVC owners. So not only do we have the individual buildings, we've got the water features, the additional busing that comes back into this. You've also got this hurricane factor. If you look into the dues into Vero Beach and Hilton Head, they both have a hurricane assessment currently impacting their dues. Now take this challenge. Go to YouTube and type in Disney Fort Wilderness Cabins Hurricane Ian. These campgrounds took it hard when the hurricane hit. Cement towers like Polynesian, Bay Lake Tower, that are built from the ground up as cement buildings with pylons drive deep into the ground, Hurricane 5 can hit them, they're not going anywhere. Disney's not evacuating those towers when a hurricane comes to town. As a matter of fact, what Disney will do is they'll come back in and they'll evacuate everybody out of all of these individual freestanding units. The tree houses, the cabins at Copper Creek, the Polynesian bungalows, and all of the Fort Wilderness cabins all got closed down because of the threat of a hurricane. They don't believe the buildings will withstand and protect people. That's Disney's own policy. If you go look it up from November 2022, you can read about Hurricane Ian there. That's a little concerning to me because I see what happens to the dues at Hilton Head and Vero Beach. So in the back of my mind, these mobile homes that are wheeled in, wheeled out, DVC has converted a trailer park into a timeshare. You're just going to have the maintenance issues that comes with the temporary nature of these timeshare buildings. And one of the leading theories that we've heard out there is why this Palmetto Trust happened is because these trailers are not permanent structures. And you can't put a non-permanent structure inside a Florida timeshare. That's one of the leading theories that I've heard there. Again, I can't get DVC to confirm or deny it, so we won't ever know. But it makes a lot of sense to me as well. And as a DVC member, I would rather own a cement tower that is clearly built to withstand hurricanes than I would owning a piece of property that has to get evacuated every time there's a hurricane. Now, on the positive side here... Members do not have to pay to maintain and replace all the washers and dryers in 300 individual units. That works out well for dues, but for my desirability to stay there in sweaty Florida in the summertime, where in a normal one bedroom, I can just bring three sets of clothes and just do laundry every day, that's kind of a big downturn to me. And it really makes me not want to stay there, at least during the summertime or on times when I'm flying a budget airline and I'm limited on the amount of bags that I can bring with me. Number five reason, and I already got into this a little bit, is you're buying a trailer, a mobile home that was converted into a timeshare. Like, just stop and think about that for a reason. I've been looking at Florida construction methods down here. My house is... A cement slab with every fifth hole in the cinder block deal is filled from the ground to the, to the floor with cement. A hurricane can come and huff and puff on this house and it ain't going anywhere. There is cement strappings that are essentially going all the way down into the foundation footings of this house that come all the way up. They wrap all the way around the wood rafters. That roof is literally strapped down to the ground. It's not going anywhere. I don't know for a fact that these trailers that they can wheel in and out 
are going to have the same stay power when a hurricane does hit. And Disney policy, as I've already mentioned to you, they don't think they're super safe either. That's why they're taking an abundance of caution and evacuating people from the cabins when there's a hurricane here. Keep that in mind. As an owner, if a hurricane hits those trailers, we're on the hook for it. We're getting the special assessment. No thank you, Disney. I choose not to own your trailer park turned into a timeshare. I'll gladly book it at certain times of the year when I don't need a washer and dryer. I'll be glad to hang out with anybody there who wants to come back in and hang out. We will meet at Hoopty Doo and we will have a rockin' good time because I love myself some Fort Wilderness Hoopty Doo, right? I have nothing against anything there, but as an owner of this resort, I don't know that I want to own this. I'd rather just rent it. I'd rather just, you know, seven month into it and book it when I can. Y'all can take care of the ownership issues and things that come with the dues and the hurricanes and all that other kind of fun stuff. The number six reason why I'm not buying here, the incentives. When Grand Floridian went on final sale blowout, we were seeing that in the 160s with Magical Beginnings. And that's where you sell back your first year of points. We were into the 170s, 180s with Villas at Disneyland Tower when it came out. And now today, if you buy 150 points on the initial opening day incentives at the cabins, you're dropping $33,000 and it's around $200 a point. I'm out. The incentives are not incentivizing me to buy this property. I need a little bit more. As I look at the long-term cost of this, I can't come back in and wrap my head around it and in good faith, come back in and say, hey, you should come back in and buy this property. Now, let's flip back over to this Palmetto Trust. Because they have said it does allow them some flexibility, we can have a glimmer of hope that they're gonna come back in and do something really cool and really creative and maybe allow nine month booking windows inside of people who buy into this new trust. We don't know how that's gonna work out. That's purely speculative. You can only hope there, but as an informed and educated consumer, I can't make a decision on it and I can't let it positively impact my decision of buy or not buy. I've gotta come back in and go, I'm gonna err around the side of caution and assume that it's not going to be a good thing. Otherwise, they would have came back in and laid all their cards on the table and been honest with us about what exactly is going on with this Palmetto Trust. How do they see this thing unfolding in the future? That's what I really want DVC to come back in and tell us. That's what they're not telling us. And because of that, I'm out. Now, let's flip back over and talk about some incredible things that do happen for owners there. From what I can tell, there is an emotional bond that some families have with this campground. And if that's your family, I am not throwing shade at you whatsoever. I've stated before, I'd love to capture that emotional magic that you guys see and share that with the rest of the world. And I'll bite my tongue on my own opinions. Because this is my episode to come back in and share my opinions, which in over a thousand plus episodes and live streams and everything that we've done, there's probably been five or six Pure episodes dedicated to my opinion, and this is one of them. The vast majority of the time, I'm out here sharing members' opinions, and I work my tail off to capture the magic that you guys see and share that with the rest of the community. That's not changing. But back to these two magical times. I'm told that there's a parade of golf carts, and people really decorate up their golf carts, and it's really kind of a big deal and a fun deal here. I've never seen this at Disney, but I do know from visiting some golf cart communities here in Central Florida, these lighted golf cart parades are a big deal. And the whole community around here comes together when we have a a golf cart community thing. And it's really kind of fun to see how people have creatively, you know, essentially pimp my ride to their golf carts. And if you're doing this at a Disney one and a Disney level of it and Disney fans are involved, that's got to be awesome and magical. And as an owner here, you'll get 11-month priority at booking that time. And if you're going to buy this and you're not an existing member, please head over to mydvcpoints.com slash dream it forward, and I can save you an additional $500 by using my referral link. The first person this year that does it, I think I'll get $150. If you have another friend who owns DVC and they live in a state where they can get compensated, by all means, use their link. 
I'm only sharing my link so that I can help those people who don't have a friend save an additional 500 bucks. My other pro tip here would be, if you're going to buy points at this resort, consider buying one of the fixed weeks that will hit those special lighted golf cart times. From what I'm told, because of the variable nature of the, the event, you're only going to hit it about three out of five years. But that's three out of five years that you'll be there for that magical week. And when you go to resell that contract, that fixed week goes to your next buyer. So that's going to be a competitive advantage that your contract has that the next guy doesn't have because they didn't listen to our show and they didn't follow our advice. I would for sure grab a fixed week if I was going to come back in and buy this for one of those golf cart times. That pretty much wraps up today's show. I want to thank you for tuning in this whole entire time. If you're a Fort Wilderness cabin, I'll say it again. Please reach out to me, mydvcpoints at gmail.com. Shoot me a note. I would love to come back in and counterbalance my opinion on this resort because I want to capture the magic of DVC and I want to share that positive element with it. In my opinion, DVC is like far off the, you know, they, they shanked one into the weeds on this choice. I have to call it like I see it because we are a grassroots organization with authentic member communication and authentic member to member content. That being said, I want to give a huge shout out of thanks to our sponsors over at World of DVC, which includes dvcrentalstore.com, where you can get a much better deal using their swap program and using their rental program than you can through trading your points into Disney Direct. A huge shout out of thanks to DVC Resale Market, who are the epitome of professional real estate agents that you can trust will come back in and help you buy and sell your property as a professional licensed real estate agent. As a matter of fact, every single person on their team used to be a former guide with Disney Direct, and now they're selling resale. So you can get that Disney level magic and experience without having to pay the Disney price tag. DVCresalemarket.com. And also a huge shout out to Monera Financial. If you're looking to save a boatload of money in buying resale, and you don't know this, Monera finances DVC resale contracts. So you don't have to buy direct just to finance your contract. I've heard of numerous people that have bought direct because they didn't know financing was an option for resale buyers. Huge shout out thank yous to our Patreons. I could not do this show without all of your support as well. Today's show was some pretty raw truth that most creators would put behind a paywall. But here at My DVC Points, we're a giving community and I give you everything that I possibly can in every single episode. And as well, if you're a giver and you wanna give something back because you've received blessings from our content, please join us over at patreon.com slash mydvcpoints. As always, hopefully you learned something in today's episode that'll help you go out there and plan something magical for your family. Ladies and gentlemen, please watch your head and step as you exit and take small children by the hand. Aw, oh, chill up, Dad. You know we'll come back. With DVC. My DVC Points is an unofficial Disney-inspired podcast created by fans of Disney Vacation Club. The thoughts expressed in this podcast are personal opinions and personal experiences. My DVC Points is not affiliated with Disney Vacation Club, the Walt Disney Companies, or any subsidiaries. We encourage listeners to contact their DVC guide or member services for official DVC policies.